Like a six day split? Um, that Dell spot so much. Uh, yeah, six days. So, one, the fact that um, ideally what I want to do is try and have your and my split overlay as close as possible. Okay. And just for the reason that I know we're not going to train together every single time, but like when we do, it'd be nice with obviously we're on the same body part. Yeah. Yeah. But even on top of that, I was thinking about it like, it's not a big deal at all if like, you know, if they don't line up and just come train at the same time. Because like half of it is like, I just want you to get those extra reps. Okay. You know what I mean? So for someone can spot you confidently. But I did change it. So one, getting you an extra chest and back day. So you have your you have one back day by itself. You have a chest day with the delts. And then I actually have you train chest and back together another time. Okay. Because I figured like, because that's you, kind of how you had it when you were training them again at night was yeah. to get an extra session for each. So this way I just kind of snuck it in here. So the difference, so here's, the, obviously I'll send you all this. But so now it would be um, back, chest and delts, delts by themselves. Probably I changed that order. I'll put the delts with the back. And then uh, biceps and triceps the first day, then legs, then chest and back together, and then your second arm day. Yeah, it works, yeah. All right, and I, that way I figure we're getting a lot of frequency with every body. And then same as always with off days. Like if you feel like you need them, you need them. If you don't need them, you don't need them. Just add them wherever Normally I do like three days on, one yeah. day off for me. Okay, cool. Yeah, and there, I'm sure there's gonna be times when you're just, cause half of it is with that amount of frequency of some of the smaller body parts, you might just feel freaking great. But I'm like coming through some of these days, like when we have like the leg day relatively close yeah. to that chest and back day, like, you know, that might be a good day for an off day consistently as after legs or whatever, you know, okay. you know the bigger body parts. Probably, yeah. Let me change that, or I'll probably put, let me put the delts with the chest, even though we'll hit them today anyway. So I was saying like, I, I'm the same as everybody else, like whenever I'm doing my split, it's like this fucking event where I'm like, I feel like I get all the chest pieces like just perfect, or I'm gonna like blow up the universe. <laughs> Where it's like, I just gotta remember, like, it's obviously I don't wanna, like, I wanna find the movements that are really, really working and we'll run them into the ground. Okay. But as far as a split goes, you know, we might figure out four weeks in, like, let's just change something. And that's not a big deal at all. So, like, well, like, that whole thing is, like, obviously the idea is we're just trying to train your upper body, pretty much everything in your upper body, twice as often as your legs. Yeah. Um, and so that's obviously not rocket science, but we'll, then we'll get into the, a little bit of a matter of semantics is how that's actually going and how that's going with recovery. So like on the on the second, mm -hmm. when I train chest on the, the delt day, so everything on this the first chest day is fine, but yep. on delts I just added in like a flat press, but I used like the prime, uh, prime flat bench thing. Yeah. Okay. That was it with the... Um, so that's, a, so the thing I still have left completely open when we look is when we get your next chest and back day. So yeah. we can add all And so that. I'll figure out, you pretty much pick whatever movements that we don't have on there with, that you like best. Okay. Cause that's obviously like you got, I think those are body parts you got figured out pretty well. So it'll just be stuff that you just make sure that we're getting everything that you like. Okay. And especially cause like I think your first back day is kind of just, you're hitting a little bit of everything. Like we're, <laughs> we're not missing anything. Yeah. So then we just make sure that obviously, you know how back is, it's if there's something specific you want to add in or you want to do more of, um, we'll make sure that it's in there. But you feel pretty good about, so incline dumbbell press, good. So I noticed too, like you lower the, the volume quite a bit, which is... Well, so the the volume, I, I literally want to just start from scratch on that. Okay. So it's, uh, I, because I, that's one of those things, because everything's so different now is with how, how frequently we'll be training together. Okay. Even with how your schedule is now. I mean, obviously I know that you're busy, but physically not as busy, you know what I mean? Okay, so yeah, we yeah. don't really know what your recovery is like. Okay. Um, so kind of as default on almost all of this, like the way that I like to do is like your absolute biggest movements you know, so when we get into squat variations, deadlift variations, we'll probably just start with one working set on those, and that'll so, be it. Yeah, I was gonna say. Yeah, so it's <laughs> my 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 uh, the amount of volume I can handle drop like a lot. For like, sure, yeah. It, yeah, I've been doing. I've still been doing like the old one with the three sets of five. Yeah, oh, if it, it was. It's been uh, a little too much. Yeah, yeah. a lot of yeah. Well, and so, <laughs> and so the combination of things with that is hopefully like so the idea is like the big things that we'll focus on when we're training together, and like especially for the stuff. Cause honestly, like some of your big movements, obviously you can always make things a little bit prettier and a little bit tighter. Okay. And so if everything's a little bit prettier and tighter and still as heavy as you can tolerate, you're not gonna need as much. But also like it's still the idea of, uh, there's never any point in time, you always wanna do as little as possible to produce the most yeah. results. You know, so if, with the big movements, like and especially now that you're we're gonna be getting strong, like if you're, you know, hitting PR squats and PR deadlifts, you might never need more sets on that big stuff. Okay. And I always like, it's one of those things where it's that risk reward stuff. So I don't think there's any movement that's technically unsafe, okay. but those are movements that definitely require more focus. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's easy, like just the more time you spend doing them, it's like the more likelihood that's like, it's like riding a motorcycle or something. Yeah, it's yeah. like, well, if I ride a motorcycle, you'd be perfectly fine and safe. 
but you do it twice as often, three times as often, five times as often. So it's just one of those things where it's not even, it's not even necessarily the physical demands, it's like how high we're putting it. And then it's so much stimulus, I just don't think you're gonna need a whole lot more. So big movements will pretty much start at one uh, working set, and then pretty much everything else will just start with two. Okay. So we'll start with, you know, keeping that top set in the five to eight rep range. Okay. And then the second set, some of that I just want you to go by feel a little bit as well too, because I'll have certain body parts that I, even when I do a second set, I kind of like to keep it sometimes in the five to eight, where okay. something like delts, I definitely want to make sure that sometimes it's up in like the 10 to 15 yeah. or whatever. And so like, that's the kind of stuff where it's like, I think that's where you got to use anecdotal evidence a lot, where it's like, you'll just know that, you know, again, some things that you do. Like if I'm training, if I'm training chest for the most part, I don't, I'm kind of always in that five to eight. I don't really go super high rep range. Okay. Um, whereas if something else like, again, like arms or delts, which is an easy example where I like to get up in those higher rep ranges sometimes. And that'll just be the start. And then we'll just figure out real fast. Um, Cause again, we're between, you know, hopefully using more weight than we've used in a while and me being on top of you for as many sets as we possibly can and hopefully taking them further and taking them prettier than we've done before. Okay. It's just going to be new territory with what we're getting out of those two sets. Okay. And then we can just adjust as we go along. Uh, but I do actually want you to try, like we've been doing that, um, so I might put there, between these two, because it's easy when we have it set up here, but if you're training at MI40, you might just want to do dumbbell shoulder press, but that uh, kind of a neutral grip uh, Swiss bar press with reverse yeah, bands. I don't think I've ever had you do it. No, but I think I'm like, I think I'm already talking about it. Yeah, yeah, so it's just the bar that's like the, the all the- couple, yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. So like the thing about that one, so the whole reason I love that is there's not a person on earth, like if you just look at how many degrees of motion your shoulder's going through from here to here, it's like 160 degrees range of motion. Whereas from here, like, it's, you know, this I still might be 90. I mean, it's, and it's right in the mid range. It's still a great exercise. Okay. But when you set the bands up just right on that, it's hard to argue like the whole, you know, it's a full range of motion. It's appropriate load challenge to the whole range of motion. Okay. And it tends to be super easy on the joints. Yeah. So yeah. it's like one that I, I like a lot. So I'll, we'll, we'll maybe just try that rotating in for a little while. Cause that's the longest I've done it. I probably did it for six to eight weeks straight. And it's, it's a pretty sweet exercise. So that'll be one where just, um, I'll, I'll go through that one with you. So you know how to do it and get all the setup and see if you like it. And then we can just, um, cause I want to do some dumbbell shoulder press as well too. So we kind of go back and forth with those. All right, so biceps and triceps. Um, so single arm, dumbbell, yes. preacher. Yep, so single arm, preacher. And then, so I don't think I've had you do this one either, the Swiss bar with the no, chains. What I've been doing is just like a floor, narrow grip, like a floor press okay. with a narrow grip. Yeah, you like this one better. Okay. So one, so the whole thing is the, so we'll get the grip, so whatever for whatever your structure the thing is, are you doing, what, what kind of bar are you using? Uh, oh, are you using, using the Smith. Using the Smith, yeah. okay, yeah, yeah. So I, I think, Again, you'll like this better because you're pretty wide. So, like at some point in time, <laughs> my arms are pretty. pretty yeah. So, right so at some point in time, it just alignment gets tough-ish on that. Okay. So again, this will be. It's I find it be the easiest one to keep the hands stacked right over the elbow. Okay. And then still is like even though we want, you want to overload the top. The thing I don't like about the floor press as much is you're still missing out on the bottom, all this. Yeah. So it's yeah. a lot of elbow flexion. You're still probably missing, you know, maybe 30 degrees of flexion where you're strong as well too. Okay. Um. So it's the one where. Cause all that accommodating resistance stuff, people are like, well, why would you use bands sometimes, reverse bands sometimes, from the bottom sometimes, chains sometimes. It's just about semantics and convenience. Okay. And um, honestly, the chains on that one just works really, really well. Um, so it'll be one where you're fine again because of that position. Almost everybody can bring it pretty much all the way down. So get a lot of range of motion at the elbow and the shoulders one too, just get some extra front delt work. Okay. And then just overloading the shit at the top. So again, you're gonna get the same You'll have just an appropriate load here. The thing you'll like about it is it's really, really deloaded. So it'll be like the way we have those chains set up, it might literally be a hundred pounds lighter at the bottom okay. than it is at the top. So you're just you're still like just like a floor press. You're just taxing the shit out of this range okay. more than the bottom. And then it tends to be pretty easy on the shoulders as well, too. And so that's because that you'll see we have a lot of pressing in here. And that's the thing you gotta be careful about. If you're doing dumbbell pressing and chest pressing and all that kind of stuff, but then we also have close grip press for triceps. I have dips in here a little bit later on. I think that's one of the real big reasons for accommodating resistance. Whereas if you're, if all of it's just brutal at the bottom, then ultimately I think that's where you're gonna tend to have more shoulder issues. No, Especially yeah. two of the days we're trying to do it mainly for triceps. We wanna essentially make sure it's deloaded and not, not getting whacked there. Um, then legs pretty straightforward. Seated leg curl first. Um, I might actually, I was thinking about possibly changing the order on that. Because I've been doing what it depends. Well, actually, I guess for you, for your hamstrings, we'll keep that first for a little while still. Okay. 
So seated leg curls, um, yeah, because we have your quads on, they're gonna be good. And then so whatever squat variation we wanna do, um, so either front squat or safety bar squat, heel okay. elevated, and then we'll go uh, lying leg curl. And that, the only thing we'll do on that, depending on the day, is if you ever have a day when you feel like your lower back got a little whacked from squats. Yeah, mine did yesterday, I did less yesterday. Okay. But I did, I set it at three instead of, so the with the decrease in, uh, sets it may be better yeah, it should yeah. be better yeah it should be yeah so that's the half of it so that's, that's another reason for that so like when we're doing stuff like this so this is where 99 percent of the time we'll probably do one set of squats and then if we want more volume for quad stuff and similar movements we got hacks at the end we got walking lunges so walking lunges will probably be something we're always doing two to three ish working sets okay and then the nice part about having hacks last is like we'll know like okay, well, what do we have left in the tank? You know, if we really feel like we want some added volume, it's a very safe, locked in place to do them. Um, so the only thing I would say, I was gonna say too, is on the squats, if you're ever a little bit beat up, um, you can just do those single leg, the line leg curls. It's probably one of the easiest things to do. So if your lower backs, it's much less to stabilize, obviously your pelvis, so just do those single legs, then walking lunges. Um, and then for hacks, there's some sort of accommodating resistance on those as well too. Then uh, what do you wanna do next for back? After that, is there anything we didn't have on there you wanna do or a different machine? Um... Not really, not really. The, the, on the first back workout, you got the, like, uh, the Nautilus uh, yep. Explode and uh, the Extreme Room, and I yeah. like both of those. That was, I literally wrote exercises that I like, yeah. and then that was the only two I wrote for that one. Okay. Well, we, I mean, you can hit them again if you want. I mean, it's like, the, the things that fit the best is, like, you might as well repeat them. Okay. I mean, so if you want, we can just start there. And that might be the thing when you're just between here and at my 40 at some point in time, where the nice part about this day is, like, if those are always your meat and potatoes, like one, if they're feeling good, repeating them, you're just gonna grow twice as fast for the most okay. part. But the easy thing too is if you ever just get bored or you wanna just like, oh, I wanna put in that. The thing I like that the MI40 has, we don't have it here, is the Magnum Roll row. That one's pretty sweet. You know the one where it's like, the handles go from together oh, to apart? Oh, I've been using that one. That yeah, was, yeah. That one's pretty cool too. All right, well, let's put that on there then. Yeah. So we'll put the Magnum Roll on there when you got it. Um, so stuff like that, because there's so many cool back pieces, it's half the way that I pick back stuff sometimes. I'm like, oh, it's a cool piece I don't have here or whatever, <laughs> yeah. so let's do that the next arm day okay. is so just the single arm so just on the single arm uh, T bench again okay. the it's all you're doing is just the single arm again but doing this like a, a normal grip okay. you know so this the first day we have it as your second exercise hammer strength or excuse me hammer grip this one will be your first exercise normal grip okay. that makes sense, that makes sense. Um, and then we'll do dips and I'm want to do on those I'll show you how to set up to do accommodating resistance on those as well too because okay. same thing I mean, it's, I like dips because you get a little bit of extra everything. Obviously, your chest is going to a little bit of work still, and your front delts get some work still. But I'll show you how to set up. Like, I like setting up bands on that. It's become one of my favorites because you can literally have, so there's only body weight at the bottom, and it's really easy to set up and have, like, 100-plus pounds added at the top. Okay. And so it's like, once you do it, it's nice because once you, by the, the comparison of the feel, same as all the comedy resistance, you'll be at the bottom like, oh, this isn't bad at all. And as you come into that lockout, it just gets fucking brutal for your okay. triceps. Um... So that's a nice one. I figured, because I kind of want to put as much pressing stuff in there as I can for you, because that's just going to get you a good look for everyone you need it. And then uh, incline cable curls. So whether you want to do those seated or standing, you know, that's just the yeah. behind the back, whatever you want to call them. Those ones, just getting that fully lengthened position. Yeah, man. And then the only things that we'll focus on, um, which I'm most pumped about you being here, is um, so literally like the whole, I think the thing that's going to have the most massive change in your physique long term is literally those last to two, one to two reps on everything added up basically over two years you know so even like especially because because then honestly like some of the bigger stuff like you want to watch when we train chest and we go through some stuff like and i mean this in a positive way but like i see like i see like there's opportunities still like so yeah, we're yeah. going through it like the just the better control you can always get at the negatives the better control you can get at end ranges and because it's like it's like that far off or that much you can still prove like it's not mm -hmm. going to take down your your strength at all on almost anything okay. but then even like as the movements get smaller like that's half of it like even even for as much as your arms changed last year like i think it's going to be even exponentially more these next year or two okay. just because like arms are tease as hell like if like if i never did rack deadlifts with you again but you went from doing 500 to 700 your back's gonna be bigger. Yeah. Whereas like the opportunity for like a bicep curl, like at the end of the day, it's that, like there's not a whole lot else going on. Yeah. So it's literally the difference of like, you know, if your arm moves like that much, or if you just skip out on that last little bit, like that doesn't seem like a huge deal at the moment, but even though like it's just kind of like made up, I think of like the percentage 
of what those little motions equate to, time. like for that exercise, because it's such a small mo motion already, uh -huh. that added up over time makes a massive difference. So that's when you get people where it's like, so people want the fucking magic bullet where it's like, well, what do I, what do I, I'm doing? Like, even when people say like, well, I got your exercises. I'm doing the right thing. I'm doing the right stuff. Like, what do I do now? And I was like, that may seem tedious, but that's why I always tell people like, you have to have a good training partner because yeah. you're never going to get those one or two reps exactly the way they should be. Like, unless you've got someone taking you there those last couple inches mm -hmm. and then that kind of stuff added up exponentially over time is just going to be the massive difference. And again, especially for those kind of like tedious body parts. I mean, that's, that's, that's everything. And especially at your level. So it's like, again, if you're brand new and you're just putting some weight on something and just getting some load through your body, stuff's gonna grow. But when you're yeah. at this point, like the more, you know, those little differences will go the long run, you know? Okay. Sweet. Awesome. Good? Yeah. All yeah. right, sweet. That's good. You're like, oh yeah, that was my set of 20, but if you have to beat it next week, next <laughs> yeah, week, it gets next harder, week yeah. once you get to six weeks, you're like, oh fuck, like now I'm actually training to fill you for a change of pace. And um, so anyway, yeah. I like the, like obviously for the longest time, I like hit, I like incorporating some volume or metabolic work as well too. And I don't think there's a 100% right answer, but there's some times where like, I'll do something like on paper, like, oh, I like this, I like this super set, I like this giant set, and I think it's good. Yeah. The only thing that I'll tend to lose myself sometimes, and again, sometimes, man, if you're well fed and you're feeling good and it just makes you feel good to just do some of that stuff, I think that overall is a good thing. But I need sometimes too where I have something that has like a sense of urgency, where it's a similar type thing. And so like my expansion off of that, like the way that I've always done it, but I'm trying to even like think of a way to make it even more concise. So again, if you didn't want to think one day, like, okay, well, for chest, I want to just do something to just to fuck this up. As much volume concentrated as possible is pairing end ranges and pairing that with, uh, again, partials or even to the point of isometric holds. So it might be like, if we're doing chest, it might be doing, you know, you do a set of flies to failure in the short range from, you know, 12 to 15 reps, superset it immediately to something in the length and range, you know, 10 to 15 reps, superset it to something immediately that's like maybe partials and then even fitting maybe with like isometric holds. Okay. And to the point even where you're literally only doing maybe one round of that, that's if you're right. actually taking it all the way to failure. So I like the idea that it's like, I don't want to waste all this extra volume. Cause again, if I do, if I do four sets of all submaximal fluff, even though it's, it's all technically submaximal relative to the intensity we're using to start, yeah. but it's submaximal even for where I'm technically at at that point if I'm doing yeah. four sets of it. So I like, I've done that kind of stuff in the past before and I just kind of, cause sometimes I do just feel like playing around in the gym, like I said, yeah. which is fine, but there's sometimes where I want, okay, but those things done right are fucking horrible and brutal where it's yeah. like, it might, that whole set might take two to three minutes and if you do it once, it's the most epic pumps, you're the most fucks you can get and you can't move. And I just think like, I like the idea of like, that's a really fucking efficient use of time in the gym where we've hit some PRs of straight sets. We go right into this brutal, horrible thing. You might do one set where you're doing half of the reps just to kind of, I got to feel this is my weight okay. today. And then just fucking take that all the way to failure two to three minutes and then you're done. 